Good morning. I like megaliths. I think they're wonderful and mysterious and beautiful. They're just beautiful to look at. I'd like to have a, a big coffee table book of megaliths. I might have to, I might have to make that. And in this part of the world, at least, megaliths are part of the landscape, the landscape of the Hibagon, the Japanese Bigfoot, and my landscape. I live here, and you can hardly take a hike in these mountains without stumbling across at least one megalith. Who made them? When? Why? What are they for, exactly? I don't think anyone knows for sure. And we don't even know where they all are. The world seems to have lost and forgotten all about this colossal solar calendar on our beloved Mount Heba. And who knows what hides in these remote and impenetrable forests. Remember, 73% of Japan is uninhabitable. No one even goes in there. No one but me. And remember, they lost the megalithic mirror stone at Senkoji Temple in downtown Onomichi City. Lost it for 800 years, and they'd laugh at you if you asked to see it. That's a legend, they said. But they found it by accident only a few years ago. It's just amazing. Well, we do know this. We know that the people who made these things were nuts about geometry and astronomy. And they were miles ahead of us in my opinion. I've read about one megalith here in Japan, and if, if you know where to sit, you have to sit in the right spot. And if you're there at the right time, you have to be there at sunrise on the right day. And if you are prepared and very alert for something like 15 minutes on this one morning the rising sun hits the rock face just so that writing appears you can see the writing on the rock only when the sun is shining right on this angle and this seems like something out of lord of the rings that the elves or the dwarves might be able to do, but not men. Looks like magic to me. Other megaliths set up with little cracks where the sunlight shines through like a laser on certain sun-ups or sundowns and points like a laser onto another megalith. Maybe onto some of these mirror stones. Who knows? Well, last November, we climbed up Mount Zhao in the center of Fukuyama. Mount Zhao's old name uh, translates to Boulder Mountain or Great Rock Mountain or you could translate it Megalith Mountain. And we found this beauty. Now you can see Camera Girl, our Camera Girl clerk, skipping by there. And what do we have here? Well, it's a cloven boulder, split and arranged, with a wedge stone inserted in there very firmly. You have a nice little triangle decoration here. Now, we've seen how some of these stones 
like the stripe stone on Mount Heba, point to physical locations. That stripe stone points directly at the imperial tomb of Izanami. Through it, onto the conical Tateiboshi summit, and through that, and still on, through to the Chibi megalith on the other side of the mountain. It points to three things that we can see, maybe more. Well, this stone on Mount Zhao is its certainly aligned to something, purposefully. I, I believe that. Well, I look along the direction of the cleft, and this is the view. This is the actual view. And I don't know what I'm looking at or what I'm supposed to be seeing, if anything. Maybe this hill? Maybe there's a megalith or a, a tomb or something over there. I don't know. But as best as I could measure it, and I'm eyeballing this, the rock is pointing east by south. My eyeballing estimate, 110 degrees. Well, I say to myself, that's around where the sun would rise on the vernal equinox, I think. The spring equinox. Yeah, I've figured it out. So I go home very satisfied and proud of myself, and I, I go to confirm it, and it turns out that I'm way off. The sun rises here at 89 degrees on the vernal equinox. I'm several weeks too early. Well, that theory is shot down. I tell my disappointment to my wife, and she suggests that I go and take a look at the ancient Japanese calendar. I say, what's that? And she fills me in. My, my, I've lived here over half my life now, and the things that I don't know are still limitless. I don't know more than I know. The ancient Chinese, our neighbors over in China, had the year divided into 24 solar terms. Here they are. Now the ancient Japanese took these 24 solar terms from the Chinese and they sliced them up further into 72 micro-seasons and gave them all poetic names. Because, of course, that's what the Japanese would do. Because that's who the Japanese are. God love them. And here are the 72 Japanese micro-seasons. What day is it today? January 27th. We are right in the middle of Ice Thickens on Streams. Now that's ending on Saturday. And then on Sunday we enter the final season of the year. Hens start laying eggs. And that's going to end the 24th and final solar term, Daikon, greater cold. And that ends the ancient year. Now the ancient new year falls on February 4th. That's going to begin the first solar term, Dishun, beginning of spring, and the micro-season 
east wind melts the ice. Now, that lines up beautifully with my stone. Yeah, sunrise starting on February 4th in Fukuyama is only one degree off of my estimate, my estimate from eyeballing. So I'm guessing now that the ancients are right. I'm wrong. I'm one degree off. I correct by one degree, and now I think this looks like a New Year stone. It points 109 degrees, and it tells you when the ancient New Year has come around. That's my guess. Of course, I don't know that for sure, but it seems like a, it seems like a good fit. February 4th is next Friday. Maybe I should take a hike up there in the dark before dawn and watch that rock when the sun comes up. That would be interesting to me. I don't know. It would be cold and kind of dangerous. How much would you guys pay me? Anyway, it's something to follow up on, I think. These 72 micro seasons and more especially the older 24 solar terms, they might help us understand what some of these megaliths are trying to tell us. And of course, the Chinese historians want to tell us that the, the Chinese themselves came up with these, and maybe they did. It's natural that they would want to say that and believe it, but I just wonder if they really did come up with these themselves, or did they get them from somewhere, maybe from some more ancient source? I don't know. I don't know more than I know. I'm just wondering. And I hate to be rude, but I've just never seen the ancient Chinese or Japanese technology that would be able to cut these stones and move them all around, put them on top of mountains. Now you find these stones all over the world, not only here. Take these Karnak stones in Karnak, France. They align to 65 degrees, right between northeast by east and east northeast. Okay, in Karnak, that is sunrise, starting on August 8th. Now, August 8th doesn't mean anything to me. It's weeks before the autumnal equinox. It doesn't mean anything to me until I take my wife's advice and check the ancient calendar. And August 8th just happens to be a major division. It's the start of Dishu, the beginning of autumn. Now, I'm not suggesting that the Chinese were here in France erecting these stones. No, I'm suggesting a much older and more advanced global culture that was putting up these stones all over the place before the Chinese or French or Japanese ever got here. Maybe these are their stones and their calendar, and they all got wiped out in some worldwide cataclysm or something. I don't know. But um, check it out where you live. Check out the local megaliths or mounds and uh, measure their alignments and check it out on the calendar and tell me what you find. Now, some of my friends are going to want to tell me that I photoshopped this stone or maybe I, I even 
carved it myself and dragged it up there. Well, <laughs> you go ahead and believe that. I won't argue with you. Okay, for Hibagon, Japanese Bigfoot. And one day, I hope, I hope a very interesting book called Megaliths of Japan. One day. I'm Kyle. It is my pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for being here. I love you. Bye-bye.